salutations you are watching pop goes vr pop goes vr is a show presented in vr 180 take a look around there's a lot of neat things uh in 3d where we talk about pop culture in virtual reality or i should say virtual reality and pop culture but we're in virtual reality pop culture it's so confusing it's a new thing my name is Danthal. I'm here with my co-host, Ryan. How's it going, Ryan? I am not too bad. I'm uh, definitely falling into this whole uh, pop VR 180 thing and kind of figuring things out. Uh, I'm digging it. This is, this is good. Life is good. Uh, we are all good over here. Yourself? I'm doing well. Um, I have like a thing where I cough and I cough really hard. And I'm like, ah, uh, and I cough so much. I'm getting over that now. Um, I did like a whole round of antibiotics and steroids and things. My voice still cracks a little bit. My voice cracked when I said your name earlier. I'm like, oh, that's funny. I'm like a teenager here <laughs> the voice uh, cracking and stuff. So this week we're going to break down lawnmower man we're going to talk about the movie and about the the pop culture references and other kind of things uh that are uh, around the lawnmower man uh both ryan and i watched this recently to review and uh i think uh ryan hates it a little bit more than i do but i don't think either of us are very warm to the movie itself the themes yes the movie maybe no what are your impressions of lawnmower man well, first off, um, I mean, this is a 1992 film, like I said, all about VR. Um, it was originally adapted from a Stephen King film, which we'll talk about later, um, which ended up becoming a lawsuit because Stephen King didn't want his name anywhere near this thing uh, for reasons we'll get into. Uh, this thing was made for $10 million bucks, which actually shocked me, and made $32 million, which is even more shocking. This thing was a profitable venture. Um, Jaunt VR, which no longer exists, uh, was that VR platform that is still available, I think, on PlayStation or at least the Oculus Store. And they were going to back a Lawnmower Man VR series of films or uh, TV uh, shorts. And obviously that went the way of the dodo. Um, the CG visuals in this thing, which are, whew, we'll talk about those in a second as well. Mm. Um, they were made by Angel Studios, which ended up turning into Rockstar San Diego. The guys that made Red Dead Redemption, which is insane. Um, and it also has the first uh, CG love scene in film history. So props to the Lawnmower Man for that, I guess. Yeah. No, there was there were plenty of love scenes in there. The the camera definitely was making love to uh, Pierce Bronson and all of his his uh, t his his topless scenes there. It was gratuitous, like the beginning of the movie. Him in bed. Oh 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 oh! I've got to have a cigarette. I hate when you smoke in bed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a female gratuitous, voices right. now. Yeah, so there was there was more than just the CG uh, 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 love scene. There was actual love scenes and everything, which is always right. a little bit awkward when you're a, a kid in the theater watching this movie, which I was. This movie came out in 1992. I was a junior in high school. I went and saw this in the theater, I think by myself, uh, because I wanted to see a virtual reality movie a lot. I loved it. I did not see this in theaters. I didn't see this till way after the fact. I was a child at this time, so I was what, 11 years old, so this was not on my radar. You were, yeah, that's that's kind of young for Lawnmower Man. No, you had to be younger than 11. I guess, uh, I, I'll, I'll trust your age. How old no, are you? No, my math is correct. You don't, have to, I, you don't have to tell me your age. But yeah, uh, no, this was like a, a formative uh, uh, movie in my youth because there was so very little virtual reality kind of things out there. There's like brainstorm and other movies that kind of talked about it, but this is the first movie that addressed VR as being virtual reality headsets and stuff that I saw in the theaters. So that's why it was influential uh, on me watching it later as an adult. It loses a lot. Uh, but I was, you say lackluster graphics. I was impressed by the graphics at the time in the theater. They weren't the best, but they didn't need to be the best. They just needed to communicate what was going on. I don't know. They did that. Don't remember, they did that. Um, I'm not going to say, I mean, obviously, it, we're talking about a film, you know, that's pushing 30 years old, so uh, I don't expect it to be hey. great CG, but they, there was some stuff in there that was just like, ooh, this is, this is rough. This is rough, boys and girls. <laughs> that, ma that math does upset me. You're right. It's almost 30 years old. Ugh. Such a long time ago, such a long time ago. Uh, but the virtual, the gear itself very much looks like the gear we use now. The gloves, no. But the headset itself and, uh, and everything else, that part of it was good. 
I, I, I can't wait till we get those whole, you know, things where you spin around and you're, oh, you, what do they call those in the movie? I forget. I just think it's the, just a gyroscope. I'm not sure what else you'd call that thing. They never yeah. mentioned what they were. So just a cool looking visual effect. They said something effect. like, the, they had a name for it. But yeah, that way you can feel floating, uh, 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 flying and falling. What's next, effing? <laughs> Some of the lines in the movie were so cheesy. Oh yeah, they're bad. I mean, this is so the what, opening crawl. This is the opening of this movie. Starts off with "By the turn of the millennium, a technology known as virtual reality will be in widespread use. It will allow you to enter a computer-generated artificial world as unlimited as the imagination itself. Its ooh. creators foresee millions of positive uses, while others fear it is a new form of mind control. This is ooh. the state of VR in 1992, boys and girls. <laughs> yes. So there's like there's two kind of things that are going on with the VR in the movie. First, there's the virtual reality where they're in hammocks and they're like doing, "Oh, look, my hands. Oh, those are my hands." And uh <laughs> and poking and everything else and opening windows and things that are kind of goofy. And then there's a virtual reality where it's like throwing ruins into your face. You're seeing these circles and pluses and squares. And, uh, and you're, oh, I'm getting smarter. Uh, which <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. is the basic plot of the, the movie. If you've ever uh, heard of the book Flowers for Algernon, like the book is, here's this rat that we experimented on with chemicals in his brain and other kind of things, and it makes this rat smart. Let's do it to a dumb person. And they do it to a dumb person. And the dumb person becomes super smart. And it ends up that the, uh, the, the the serum in the brain fades and it makes you dumb again. And they're both... Like, so that's kind of what's going on with this. It's a total ripoff of Flowers for Algernon. And has no relation to, uh, to the Stephen King story. Except for the title of the Stephen King story. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, this thing is so full of 90s shtick. It's ridiculous. Yes. And like I said, the effects, where we criticize the effects, I have less problem with the CG than I do mm-hmm. with the uh, the monkey vision that was in the oh, beginning yes. of the film. That was rough. Cybo man. No, I mean, man. <laughs> that was so rough. I mean, yes. I don't mind. Obviously, you're using a monkey, and those monkeys in like this like terrible, awful RoboCop VR thing that's more of an AR thing, really, when you think about it. But... Um, and this thing, this monkey's been basically programmed to kill, and it escapes its cell, and just goes through the institution and kills, I think, just one dude, and then escapes, and then finds Job, our, eventually, our main character, between him and Pierce Brosnan, uh, what's his name, Dr. Angelo. Angelo. Um, and so, yeah, this monkey, whenever, whenever they show the monkey, you can tell this monkey is just kind of you know, doing its monkey thing, and they just, like, little short snippets of monkey, but they go to monkey cam, where the camera's, like, above the monkey's head, and it's obviously just, like, some dude's arm, like, keeping the, the, the head in frame, and it just looks, like, so, so bad. Like, this movie starts off, like, not a B movie, like a C movie. I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be absolutely awful. How, like, this is, like, made for TV at best, but mm. after that first long act about the half an hour in things get substantially better yeah at that time there was another movie that was out uh where they were doing training on chimpanzees uh and and, and you know hurting them and training them. so it was kind of a rip off of that movie too i can't remember the name of the movie matthew broderick was in it uh, but that was another monkey. I liked the the whole cyber monkey outfit thing that they had. It was awesome. Oh, it's so bad. It was goofy. It was bad, but it kind of set the scene. You know, um, one of my friends who's a, a, a you know filmmaker, screenwriter as well says, you know, show don't tell, and that was definitely showing that technology and that. But what was the goal there? Were they really wanting to have like a, a really smart apes? Uh, and cyber going and killing people in other countries. Yeah, an army uh, of super smart, angry, virtual yeah. reality apes. Yep, that was their plan. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, the training was weird. But it was just it was an excuse to get those computer graphics in there and make it seem like a sci-fi thriller. There's going to be killing. You know, they they set the scene. It's like a lot when you play uh, video games and they show you. You know, you learn to double jump. You can learn. Oh, monkeys can shoot people and kill. Uh, and they later gun the monkey down, and you see a dead monkey getting shot. No. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think an- any animals were harmed, but it- it's 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 always fun to have a monkey in your movie, a chimpanzee. Um, that was cool. So yeah, so Doctor Angelo, uh, he's the guy who 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 makes monkeys smart. Uh, but he had the shop 
wants him to make violent applications, and he doesn't want to make violent applications. So he finds Job, uh, the lawnmower man, while he's on a hiatus, because I don't want to cooperate with you and make war machines. So he teaches Job, uh, you know, to be a little bit smarter. Gives him the shot, uh, uh, puts on the virtual reality goggles, throws the runes in his face, and he's, like, getting smarter, and he turns into a cowboy, and he, he sleeps with the, uh, the hot lady who's single and rich, the town, and, they, the, uh, she's like the town trollop. They just like straight up, like just basically like call her out for like sleeping around. Yeah. But then they defend, but then they, to their their credit, they actually defended it. It was being like, hey man, it's her choice. She's not a prostitute. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, that's like way more progressive than anything else in this movie. That's crazy. <laughs> it was totally progressive. And then of course, <laughs> uh, uh, in the movie, Job uh, m- melts her mind so she can all, only laugh all of the time. That's when the movie gets weird. When the movie yeah. stops transcending where he's getting smarter and smarter and now he's lifting chairs off the ground like Yoda and, yeah. and squeezing toothpaste out of toothpaste tubes with his brain. Uh, that's a good way for like social distancing. He would be good at that. Joe <laughs> wouldn't get the coronavirus because he could just with his brain open doors and do things and, uh, and, and make people want to put on masks. Um, this is like a two hour and 20 minute movie, which also shocked me. And it's definitely, you could totally trim off half an hour this easily. I mean, there's the whole oh. backstory with Job, and he lives with Did he you lives watch in the, the director's ground. cut? Uh, I guess. I just, I, maybe I watched the director's yeah, cut. Yeah, you watched the director. We both watched the director's cut. That's the long one. Man, there's a shorter is it long? Version of it. <laughs> no, no. It's a long movie, and they put a lot of stuff in there. They could have trimmed it down. They could have taken a lot of the supernatural powers out and just let the virtual reality and him escaping. I think. They could have removed a significant amount of plot points and uh, made it a better overall movie. For sure. I mean, like the whole preacher story and this whole drunk, like, uncle kind of thing that was there. The, the, the drunk Irish guy as his, like, father figure. And then the whole abusive... He, his neighbor is, like... Uh, or Angelo's neighbor uh, is, like, a son. And he has, like, an abusive father who beats his wife and stuff like that. There's, like, so many of these little plot points. And they all come yeah. together. But they, they're also totally unnecessary. Like, you could have easily just had him, had Job, like, you know, just, spoiler alert here. Job, you know, eventually goes crazy yeah. and starts killing fools. And, um... And he basically kills every every bad person in this movie, regardless of how bad they actually were. Yeah, he gets it bad. <laughs> they get it so yeah. bad. I thought that that, that <laughs> plot point was kind of oversold, where the husband next door is beating his wife and kids. He comes home angry from work, and he's in his his you know wife beater t shirt, drinking a beer, and just waiting to hit somebody. It's such a weird trope that they had. Yeah, but oh, yeah, that's is, that's yeah. where the lawnmower man. <laughs> Uh, uh, kind of intersects with the Stephen King lawnmower man. The Stephen King lawnmower man, the plot of it is this dude mows his lawn and kills his cat. He he doesn't mow mow his lawn because he's sad about killing his cat. So he calls uh, a lawn mowing service and they comes over and the guy just doing the lawn mowing service, uh, you know, starts, uh, lets the lawn mower control itself while he runs naked behind it eating the grass. And then uh, the guy sees this and faints, the guy who hired him. And when he wakes up and he says, yeah, this is the way I do it. It's more efficient. It's good for the environment. And uh, I I assassinate people who think that I'm doing it wrong. So the guy says, oh, well, I don't think you're doing it wrong. And then the guy goes in and calls the police. So the lawnmower man sees, oh, you're calling the police. You disapprove of the way I'm mowing your lawn. So the lawnmower man uh, 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 kills him brutally with a lawnmower. And then the police show up and say, oh, it looks like it was just an accident. That's that's the Stephen King story. Uh, well, he was b- murdered in like by a sex maniac, not an accident. So that's where the two movies intersect. Because there is a scene where Job uh, mentally controls Big Red, the lawnmower, to kill the neighbor who beat his wife and kids. Uh, yeah. That was hilarious. That was hilarious. <laughs> That was disturbing. It was just a weird thing to put in there. But yeah, Joe goes on a murder spree. And then uh, he runs back to the facility. This facility has the worst security ever, I swear. Oh yeah, it's brutal. Uh, and sometimes they have two or three guys, and other times they have whole army guys. But uh, Joe can use his mind powers. Yeah, anyways. So he connects to the internet, uh, or he, he tries to connect to the internet, and he can't because it's 1992, and it's really hard to do in 1992. Angelo locked them out. Uh, Dr. Angelo was smart enough to escape him and lock them out, so he was trapped inside I've the I've changed facility. the Wi-Fi password, ha-ha. Basically. Your chores. Yeah. Yeah. 
and then he finds a way out, and then because it's 1992, you'll know I'm in because I'll make all of the phones in the world ring at once. Uh, because there was no internet yet. No, not, not for consumers. <laughs> No, no. In 1992, we were still doing dial-up BBSs and stuff like that. That was like, uh, uh, I think, Prodigy, America Online, early days kind of stuff. I remember doing, like, I had a dial-up BBS uh, in Santa Maria where I lived. It's uh, Lois, uh, uh, that L-O-I-S. You would dial in with your 2400 baud modem and, and do that. That was the technology that existed at the time, like 4800 baud modems. But he uploaded himself to somewhere. And yes, then yes, at the yes, end yes. of the movie, all the phones ring. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of like the the the, uh, the the representation of virtual reality in this movie? It was cool. Like I said, like they, they had some AR stuff. They had, they were wearing some kind of gloves. He looks at his hands, like you said, and it's like, oh, these are my hands, and that's some straight up like hand tracking, which was awesome. Um, the headsets looked uh, really really good. Um, they didn't use giant bulky ones that existed in that time. They used much smaller ones. Um, some of the scenes had them very loosely on their heads, so they're kind of flopping around a bit more. Like they really kind of need a head strap for that. But uh, the how they represented VR, I thought really was pretty damn good. Um, when they're laying on those stupid like chairs to like do that flying game mm. and stuff like that in Angelo's basement and stuff, I was like, I kind of wish I would have that. Um, like so they're big gyroscopy things really didn't make much sense to me. Like I, like if you're flying, sure I guess, but anything beyond that in VR would just kind of make no sense. Your or like your legs and arms are like stationary. So that's kind of the more mental thing where it's like you're kind of jacked in more than you are actually like like mm -hmm. in VR. But mm -hmm. uh, I thought they did VR pretty decent, all things considered. I mean, the monkey was the worst part. But um, no, it was surprisingly how how much they kind of got right, really, considering it's for, you know, 30 years before, or 25 years before current gen VR. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that was that I, I loved about it is I forgot that Dean Norris... Uh, he's Agent Schrader in, in Breaking Bad. Uh, Hank Schrader. Uh, he was in a lot of, like, 90s sci-fi movies. So when I saw it, I'm like, is that Dean Norris? I'm like, oh, it is. He, Dean Norris's giant head, like it's Orson uh, Welles, 1984, the same kind of thing where they were trying to throw uh, so a little bit of 1984 in there to, totally. to, to spice up the camera shots and the sci-fi. But yeah, Dean Norris, uh, he was in Total Recall. He had like make, weird makeup on and stuff. He was in Starship Troopers. He was in Terminator 2. Uh, he had a mask on, so you couldn't see it. But he was in all kinds of stuff back in the day. Uh, I'm glad he got another uh, role for Breaking Bad that kind of defined him. But he was like, you know, the guy in the background, the bald cop in the background in so many of these movies. And I loved that he got to play a villain in... in One scene that stood out for me uh was when the uh when they burned the preacher <laughs> the... <laughs> oh yeah when he catches on fire first he's naked that was brutal catches on uh, uh... that was brutal that was because he was supposed to be on fire he was supposed to be on fire but then they just like removed his body completely from the frame so then it's like this like hollow like invisible man on like really low res digital fire i was like man you could just like totally just hired a, like a guy in a suit to just burn would have saved you guys probably a fortune yeah. in digital costs. Well, Job did the uh, the thing with the other guys where he turned them into little bubbles of themselves that spun around and then disassociated. Yeah. But they got to be, like, disassociated. That was like, ooh, that's a weird power. Just to be, make people into little bubbles of themselves and then spin around and then dissipate. That's brutal. He had weird powers. He can, Job did, he had a lot of weird powers that, that virtual reality gave him. I think this would have been fine without all of the powers too, but that's that's what they wanted in the movie. They want it, it was too layered. There was too many things really going on yes. to pay attention to any one of them uh, sufficiently. Um, I have like this is my my head cannon, my kind of theory on things that uh, Job uh, uh, discovered the Matrix. Maybe they were in the sixth version of the Matrix or the fifth version of the Matrix or whatever. But by by tapping into virtual reality, he learned that reality wasn't real. And that's why he was able to do those things. Like, you know, Neo can bend spoons and stop bullets. Uh, Job can do those kind of things as well. So it explains, you know, he says like, uh, what, what were the quotes here I have? Um, 
This technology has peeled back a layer to reveal another universe. Virtual reality will grow just as the telegraph grew to the telephone, the radio to the TV. It will be everywhere. And then Dr. Angelo, Job, struggle for reason. <laughs> There's a bad dialogue in there. Uh, but then, uh, you know, and he, uh, Job also, by the year tw- 2001, there won't be a person on this planet who isn't hooked into it, hooked into me. And uh, hooked in, 2001 was based, it, well, that, was a, that was a banner year for the internet, for sure. Not for VR, though. <laughs> yeah, by your theory, then, you're saying Job is like the one, but he's like a crappy the one who just went crazy. Anyway, so yeah, that's, that's like my tying everything together. The Matrix was discovered by Job in 1992, an early version of The Matrix. So I guess overall, what do you think of, like, overall, like, what do, you, what do we think of this movie? Like, would you recommend this to people, like, to watch now, 30 years after the fact? If you didn't care about VR. If we didn't Stop do what saying we 30 did, years. Like, Stop saying 30 years. You're hurting my feelings. 28 years ago. There you go. That's better. <laughs> it's 28 years old. That's better than 30. Or 44. Um, yeah. Uh, overall, like I said, this was, a, uh, this was an important movie to me. Uh, when I was a junior in high school because they was talking about virtual reality and the tech and it had neat computer graphics and, uh, and, 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 and cyber uh, sex scenes. The first cyber sex scenes. Oh, whatever. I don't know. So hot. Uh, so uh, hot. Uh, I enjoyed it at the time. And then, like, when 95, when uh, you started to see, like, kiosks with virtual reality headsets that looked just like uh, the movie, I was, like, excited. So... You know, it's like, oh, this is just like the lawnmower man. Do you have floating and flying and falling? No, but I got the other one, kid. Meet me back. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, there was that. Uh, they had like a, a, a an SS, a SNES game, Lawnmower Man, which actually wasn't bad. You got to do some of the cyber stuff. You still saw your hands, and then there's things coming, and and, and then it's a site, a, a shooter platformer uh, kind of thing. Uh, there was a PC game for it as well, which uh, uh, in 1996, uh, a PC gamer called it the 42nd worst game uh, of the year, or of all time. Or High praise. Whatever, High know. praise. High praise. 42nd. <laughs> 42. Yeah. Uh, I still enjoyed watching it. It's not a good film. They did too many things. They tried so hard to make uh, to Stephen King references and things like that in there and just kind of took... Uh, let's, you know, they imagine Stephen King, uh, anyways, I'm in the middle on it because of the themes and because of everything else. Uh, I like the movie acknowledging it's not a great movie, but I like the movie. How do you, what, what are your impressions of the movie? Like I said, it, it does get better after the first act, but I still kind of fall in line with it being, um, a, 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 an all right B movie. Um, it has its okay. moments. It's got some un, 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 unintentional comedy, um, which I always like. Um, the, the terrible CGI. Mm. It's, it's not, the CGI is fine in the VR. It's, it's that real world CGI, which I just took offense to because it's just unnecessary. Um, you know, like the army of the wasps that come in at the end and attack the soldiers yes. and stuff. It just looks so bad. And it does movies look bad. before that, 20 years before that, could do wasp attacks just by like putting black dots in the screen. But it's cyber it, wasps. I get it. I get it. It just it doesn't really translate very well. So yeah, at the end, this is it really does feel to me like a B movie. I like B movies uh, because they're like bad. I do like watching bad films. So mm-hmm. if you're kind of into watching something along those lines, this is this has its moments. It's got some comedy. That preacher guy, the preacher killed me. He was just so stereotypically abusive and yes. religious. That I just it cracked me up. I know it shouldn't crack me up, but it just it's it's just they were just like remove any character, just make him bullet points, done. And they did that. Yes. And I just comical, comic gold, comedy gold. Rather. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, good stuff. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Pop Goes VR. Uh, I am Danthal once again, and we have Ryan. Uh, where can we find out more about stuff that you do on the internet? Ryan. Uh, find me. I'm the VR Grid everywhere. I have the VRGrid.com, a YouTube channel, Twitch channel, and social media. If you like VR reviews and games, I cover as much as I can. And yeah, what about you, Danthal? Where can we find you? 
Uh, I, you can find out more about me at uh, Watch in VR. Uh, I have a channel that is there for other virtual reality stuff. I recently, for re episode 16, uh, went to a uh, Black Lives Matter protest march and i got a lot of video there it's really fun uh to watch and you get uh, to to see the moments uh, it's also very somber uh to 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 be in those places you get to see the chief of police kneeling and there's some very strong moments in there too as well as enthusiastic you know chanting marching and uh, overall good vibes it's good stuff. Uh, well, at the at the bottom here, it, uh, you can help support us. We have a Patreon, and we have uh, uh, Amazon links that you can go and and buy or rent the Lawnmower Man and watch it for yourself. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good one. Later, all.